So I heard your relationship with Penny crashed to the ground like blue eyes falling out of an airplane lavatory. Where'd you hear that? Actually, I read it. Wallowitz texted me. Like blue ice falling out of an airplane lavatory, yep. Yeah, I thought it was a pretty good one. I gave him an LOL. Huh. Anyway, it got me thinking, now that you're unattached, maybe we can revisit our previous attachment. Are you suggesting another bout of stress release? No, I'm all done with casual sex. From now on, I'm fully committed to the traditional relationship paradigm. Really? What changed? Uh, it's hard to say. I guess there's just a time in every woman's life when she gets tired of waking up on a strange food town with a bunch of people she doesn't know. Yeah, I can see how that would... A, a bunch of people? Anyway, I just figure it's time to slow things down, and who better to slow things down with than you? Oh. I'm flattered. So, how do you suggest we proceed? Your place, we'll order Chinese, you'll run a movie, artsy but accessible, then light petting, no coitus. Sounds fun. I'll leave the details up to you. I think it's better if you assume the male role. Thank you, that's very thoughtful. Great. Call me. When the two of you reach a natural stopping point, I'd like to have a word. If the word is pee pee, just do it. <laughs> Leonard, you're my friend. And friends support their friends, apparently. So I'm withdrawing my objection to your desire to have a relationship with Leslie. Thank you. I will graciously overlook the fact that she is an arrogant, subpar scientist who actually believes loop quantum gravity better unites quantum mechanics with general relativity than does string theory. <laughs> you kids have fun. Hang on a second. Loop quantum gravity clearly offers more testable predictions than string theory. I'm listening. Amuse me. Okay, well, for one thing, we expect quantized space-time to manifest itself as minute differences in the speed of light for different colors. Balderdash. Matter clearly consists of tiny strings. Are you gonna let him talk to me like that? Okay, well, there's a lot of merit to both theories. No, there isn't. Only loop quantum gravity calculates the entropy of black holes. <laughs> Sheldon, don't make that noise. It's disrespectful. I should hope so. It was a snort of derision. You agree with me, right? Loop quantum gravity is the future of physics. Sorry, Leslie. I guess I prefer my space stringy, not loopy. Well, I'm glad I found out the truth about you before this went any further. Truth? What truth? We're talking about untested hypotheses. It's no big deal. Oh, it isn't? Really? Tell me, Leonard, how will we raise the children? <laughs> I guess we wait until they're old enough and let them choose their own theory. We can't let them choose, Leonard. They're children. Wait, where are you going? I'm sorry. I could have accepted our kids being genetically unable to eat ice cream or ever get a good view of a parade. But this? This is a deal breaker. Look on the bright side. What's the bright side? Only nine more months to Comic-Con. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fellow warriors, this is Sheldor the Conqueror. We are about to enter Axel's fortress. Now, this is a long run, so let's do another bladder check. All right, Barry, we'll wait for you again, but you really should see a doctor. Sheldor is AFK. <laughs> Penny, are you experiencing some sort of difficulty? Yes, I can't get my stupid door open. You appear to have put your car key in the door lock. Are you aware of that? <laughs> yeah. All right, then. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Would it be possible for you to do this a little more quietly? <laughs> Get the damn key out. Well, it's not surprising. That Baldwin lock on your door uses traditional edge-mounted cylinders, whereas the key for your Volkswagen uses a center cylinder system. Thank 
you, Sheldon. You're welcome. Point of inquiry, why did you put your car key in the door lock? Why? I'll tell you why. Because today I had an audition. It took me two hours to get there. I waited an hour for my turn. And before I could even start, they told me I looked too Midwest for the part. Too Midwest? What the hell does that even mean? Well, the American Midwest was mostly settled by Scandinavian and Germanic people. <laughs> so they have a characteristic facial I know what it means, Sheldon! God! You know, I have been in L.A. for almost two years now, and I haven't gotten a single acting job. I have accomplished nothing. I haven't gotten a raise at work. I haven't even had sex in six months. And just now, when I was walking up those stairs, a fly flew in my mouth, and I ate it! Well, actually, insects are a dietary staple in many cultures. They're almost pure protein. I believe the condensation on your frozen foods weakened the structural integrity of the bag. <laughs> but returning to your key conundrum, perhaps you should call a locksmith and have him open the door for you. I did. He said he'll get here when he gets here. And you're frustrated because he phrased his reply in the form of a meaningless tautology? Well, no! They're there. <laughs> Would you prefer to wait in our apartment? No, Sheldon, I'd rather sit on this freezing cold floor sobbing like a three-year-old. All right, then. For God's sake. Just when I think I've gotten the hang of sarcasm. <laughs> See, Raj was the Kung Pao chicken. I'm the dumplings. Yes, you are. <laughs> creepy, Howard. Creepy good or creepy bad? <laughs> Who was the shrimp with lobster sauce? That would be me. Come to Papa, you unkosher delight. <laughs> I'm not necessarily talking to the food. <laughs> Sit over there. Sit over there. <laughs> Baby wipe. Why do you have no? Don't, don't don't. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Oh. I had to sanitize my hands because the university replaced the paper towels in the restrooms with hot air blowers. Oh, I thought the blowers were more sanitary. Oh, really? Why? Don't. <laughs> Air blowers are incubators and spewers of bacteria and pestilence. Frankly, it'd be more hygienic if they just had a plague-infested gibbon sneeze my hands dry. Hey, guys, I just got the most amazing... Gosh, Ross, do you think you'll ever be able to talk in front of me without being drunk? Okay, well, I'll just, um, go eat by myself. Honey, you don't have to do that. Oh, it's okay. Between him not talking, him talking, and... Him. <laughs> I'm better off alone, so... Goodbye, you poor, strange little man. She's so considerate. So what's your news? Remember that little planetary object I spotted beyond the Kuiper belt? Oh, yeah, 2008 NQ sub 17. Or as I called it, Planet Bollywood. <laughs> Anyway, because of my discovery, People Magazine is naming me one of the 30 under 30 to watch. Right. Congratulations. That's incredible. Excuse me, the 30 what under 30 what to watch what? 30 visionaries under 30 years of age to watch as they challenge the preconceptions of the fields. If I had a million guesses, I never would have gotten that. <laughs> It's pretty cool. They've got me in with a guy who's doing something about hunger in Indonesia, and a psychotherapist who's using dolphins to rehabilitate prisoners, and Ellen Page, star of the charming independent film Juno. Oh, I'd so do her. You do the dolphins. Do I get an honorable mention for designing the telescope camera mounting bracket you used? Sorry, it's not part of my heartwarming and personal narrative in which a humble boy from New Delhi overcame poverty and prejudice and journeyed to America to reach for the stars. Poverty? Your father's a gynecologist. He drives a Bentley. <laughs> it's a lease. Confused. Was there some sort of peer review committee to determine which scientists would be included? 
peer review, it's People Magazine. People picked me. What people? But the, 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 the people from People. What? Yeah, but exactly who are these people? You know, what are their credentials? How are they qualified? What makes accidentally noticing a hunk of rock that's been traipsing around the solar system for billions of years more noteworthy than any other scientific accomplishment made by someone under 30? Boy, I bet Ellen Page's friends aren't giving her this kind of crap. <laughs> You proud of yourself? In general, yes. I still don't see why I need a driver's license. Albert Einstein never had a driver's license. Yeah, but Albert Einstein didn't make me wet myself at 40 miles an hour. Yeah, and I never wanted to kick Albert Einstein in the nuts. <laughs> you know, I gotta ask, why didn't you just get a license at 16 like everybody else? I was otherwise engaged. Doing what? Examining perturbative amplitudes in N equals 4 supersymmetric theories, leading to a re-examination of the ultraviolet properties of multi-loop N equals 8 supergravity using modern twist-door theory. Well, how about when you were 17? <laughs> Take this to the testing area, put your name at the top, sign the bottom, answer the question, and bring it back. Next! Application? I'm actually more of a theorist. <laughs> the application in your hand, give it to her. Oh. Take this to the testing area, put your name at the top, sign the bottom, ask the question, and bring it back. Next! Wait, excuse me, but I have some concerns about these questions. <laughs> Look at that sign up there. Yes? Does it say, I give a damn? <laughs> No. That's because I don't. <laughs> Just look. See, this first question makes no sense. Look, how many car lengths should you leave in front of you when driving? Well, there's no possible way to answer that. A car length is not a standardized unit of measure. Look at the sign. <laughs> Sheldon, it's C. Just put down C. I don't need your help, Penny. Listen to that little girl, honey. Put C. Next! No, no, wait! No, hang on! Look at this next question. Sheldon, why are you arguing with the DMV? How else are they going to learn? <laughs> Look, question two. When are roadways most slippery? Now, okay, there are three answers, none of which are correct. The correct answer is when covered by a film of liquid sufficient to reduce the coefficient of static friction between the tire and the road to essentially zero, but not so deep as to introduce a new source of friction. <laughs> Here's your learner's permit. Go away. <laughs> but I'm not done. I, I have many additional concerns about these questions. Don't make me climb over this counter. All right, come on. Let's go. Next. Aced it. Congratulations. What for? Your Facebook status update. Leonard Hofstetter is in a relationship. What? No, no, that's not right. Oh, man, did you switch your status before she did? <laughs> Speaking as an expert, way to look needy. Seriously? You went first after only two weeks? That's bold. It's not bold. It's a mistake. I didn't change my status. Well, then who did? I had no choice. He cried in front of her. You hacked my Facebook account? Oh, it's hardly hacking when you use the same password for everything, Kal-El. Are you insane? Now she's gonna think I'm desperate. You've destroyed this relationship. And you wanna know the worst part is you don't even understand what you did wrong because you can't conceive of something that you are not an expert in. In which I'm not Don't even! <laughs> I don't want to hear another word out of you. Who? What's wrong, Lassie? Timmy fall down the well? <laughs> oh, wow. She just updated her Facebook status. Stephanie Barnett is in a relationship with Leonard Hofstetter. Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. I have a girlfriend. <laughs> 
If I'm permitted to speak again, Dr. Sheldon Cooper, for the win. You try too hard? <laughs> Look at me. What chance do I have if I don't try too hard? Well, you'd have a terrific chance. I mean, you're smart, you're funny, you have a cool job, you build stuff that goes into outer space. I guess. No, look, I'm telling you, I've known you for like a year and a half, and this is the first time I feel like I'm talking to a real person. And you know what? I like him. He's a nice guy. You really think so? Yes. I don't know. No, I do. <laughs> This is an auspicious moment. You, like Robert Oppenheimer or Neil Armstrong, we need the appropriate words to mark this historic scientific event. How about die, toast, or die? <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> All right, what's next? No, I think I'm just gonna stay in tonight and do laundry. <laughs> Stu the cockatoo is new at the zoo. <laughs> Author Sarah Carpenter lives in Fort Wayne, Indiana with her husband and best friend, Mark, and their cockatoo, Stu. <laughs> Hardly makes her an expert in making friends, wouldn't you agree? I don't like birds. They scare me. She me too. Most people don't see it. <laughs> what are you reading? Curious George. Oh, I do like monkeys. Curious George's monkey. Somewhat anthropomorphized, but yes. <laughs> Say, maybe sometime you and I could go see monkeys together. Would you like that? Okay. Sheldon, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm making friends with this little girl. What's your name? Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. I'm your new friend, Sheldon. No, you're not. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> we were really hitting it off. Uh, don't look up those cameras. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> what? I can't comment without violating our agreement that I not criticize your work. <laughs> then what was, oh, boy? Great restraint on my part. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the science here. Perhaps you mean a different thing than I do when you say science. <laughs> okay, how's that? You actually had it right in the first place. <laughs> Once again, you've fallen for one of my classic pranks. <laughs> Bazinga. <laughs> Now, here's a peculiar email. The president of the university wants me to meet him at his office tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Why? Doesn't say. Must be an emergency. Everyone at the university knows I eat breakfast at 8 and move my bowels at 8.20. Yes, how did we live before Twitter? <laughs> I guess you'll find out what it is in the morning. Well, that's 14 hours away. And for the next 840 minutes, I'm effectively one of Heisenberg's particles. I know where I am, or I know how fast I'm going, but I can't know both. Yeah, how am I supposed to carry on with this huge, annoying thing hovering over my head? Yeah, I know the feeling. <laughs> to begin with, you will remove Funny Bone for $200. <laughs> for this, I went to MIT. <laughs> and begin. I think I swallowed some big. I can't press any of the buttons with my gloves. Oh, son of a bitch. Adversity is to be expected. Continue. Oh, boy, am I going to get sued. Okay, I can't do this. Me either. 
Gentlemen, use your imagination. Innovate. Did Han Solo let Luke Skywalker freeze to death on the ice planet of Hoth? No. He cut open a Tauntaun and used its internal body heat to warm him up. You heard the man. Hold him down and I'll cut him open. Hang on. I, I know I don't possess the tools of leadership, but I don't understand why we can't assemble the equipment inside the hut and then take it outside. I hadn't thought of that. I guess we're done here. I'm having a little trouble catching your breath there. No, no, I'm good. If my PE teachers had told me this is what I was training for, I would have tried a lot harder. <laughs> do or do not, there is no try. <laughs> Did you just quote Star Wars? I believe I quoted Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> oh my God. I am lying in bed with a beautiful woman who can quote Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Penny. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I just want to put that out there. Oh, yeah, no. I, I'm, I'm glad. Yeah, oh, good. Uh, glad is good. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> No, no. Um. <laughs> so. <laughs> it's getting pretty late. We should probably go to sleep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Probably. Okay. Good night, sweetie. Good night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, Leonard, where do you come down on giant ants? <laughs> Sheldon says impossible. How and I say not only possible, but as a mode of transportation, way cooler than a Batmobile. You are ignoring the square cube law. The giant ant would be crushed under the weight of its own exoskeleton. And for the record, the appropriate ranking of cool modes of transportation is jetpack, hoverboard, transporter, Batmobile, and then giant ant. Seriously? You have nothing better to do than sit around and discuss the possibility of giant ants? What's with him? Perhaps he's at a sensitive point in his monthly cycle. Are you saying he's manstrating? Not literally. But as far back as the 17th century, scientists observed a 33-day fluctuation in men's hormone levels. Interesting. That might explain my weepy days in the middle of the month. You know what I'm talking about. Taken the liberty of having these made for our rematch. The Wesley Crushers? No, not the Wesley Crushers, the Wesley Crushers. I don't get it. Wesley Crusher was Will Wheaton's character on Star Trek. Still don't get it. It's a blindingly clever play on words. By appropriating his character's name and adding the S, we imply that we'll be the Crushers of Wesley. Okay, I'm sorry, honey, but the Wesley Crusher sounds like a bunch of people who like Wesley Crusher. But no, again, it's not the Wesley Crushers. It's the Wesley Crushers. <laughs> well, if you want it to mean you're crushing Wesley, it'd be the Wesley Crushers. Do you people even hear yourself? It's not the Wesley Crushers. It's not the Wesley Crushers. It's the Wesley Crushers. <laughs> hey, look, they named their team after me. <laughs> no, it's not. Never mind. After you. No, after you, as we are currently crushing you, Wesley. It's customary for the player on the right-hand lane roll first. All right. It's a custom, not a rule. I so loathe you. That's right, Sheldon. Embrace the dark side. That's not even from your franchise. Damn, they canceled my visa. <gasps> oh, yay, a new MasterCard. Uh-oh. 
What? I was going to get my mail. OK. <laughs> are, are you hoping to get it telepathically? <laughs> I think you mean telekinetically. <laughs> And no. I just wasn't sure of the proper protocol now that you and Leonard are no longer having coitus. Oh, God, can we please just say no longer seeing each other? Well, we could if it were true. But as you live in the same building, you see each other all the time. A variable which has changed is the coitus. OK, here's the protocol. You and I are still friends, and you stop saying coitus. Good. I'm glad we're still friends. Really? Oh, yes. It was a lot of work to accommodate you in my life. I'd hate for that effort to have been in vain. Right. D just to be clear, do I have to stop saying coitus with everyone or just you? Everyone. Say hello to your mother for me. OK. <laughs> what? Said you were going for a walk. I didn't say outside. So what, you're just going to walk up and down the stairs? No, of course not. That would be odd and suspicious behavior. Here, Ruffles. Here, boy. Which way are you going? Which way are you going? I parked my scooter down the block. I'm going the other way. Bye. Bye. Well, actually, I'm this way. <laughs> Do I smell hot dogs? No. I mean, I have no idea what you smell. Well, you definitely smell raw hot dog. Perhaps you're getting a brain tumor. All right. Have a nice walk. I shall. Have a nice scoot. You might want to stand back. I'm sitting on top of 13 horses here. <laughs> Doggy. Nice doggy. I bet you think you smell hot dogs. Look, a cat. Penny. 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 Here. I had to trade the others for my life. We're home. It's 10 o'clock. Where have you been? We stayed for the California Adventure Water Show. It was pure Disney magic. I was going to see that with him. How was I supposed to know that? It's all right. I'll, I'll see it again with you. And I have food here. You said you were going to call. I know, I know. I can still eat. No, you already threw up once. Go put on your PJs and brush your teeth. <laughs> OK, but just don't fight. We're not fighting. Just go. Aren't you going to thank Penny for taking you to Disneyland? Thank you, Penny. You're welcome, sweetie. Want a cup of coffee? Oh, um, I should probably get going. Come on, it's just a cup of coffee. <sighs> yeah, OK. Yeah, the whole thing seems a little twisted to me, too. What am I smelling? Sheldon's churro on my shoes. I've been seeing Penny behind your back. <laughs> OK. When you say seeing Penny, what exactly does that mean? We had dinner last night. She made me spaghetti with little hot dogs cut up in it. Fine. Why did you have dinner with Penny? I told you she made spaghetti with little hot dogs. I like spaghetti with little hot dogs. <laughs> then why did you have Chinese food with us? I didn't want to upset you. Howard made it very clear that my allegiance should be to male comrades before women who sell their bodies for money. <laughs> Is it possible he said bros before hoes? Yes, but I rephrased it to avoid offending the hose. Hold. What? Explain your sneeze. I'm sorry? Do you have allergies? No. Is there too much pepper on your salad? I don't put pepper on salads. I've heard enough. Sit over there. Oh, 
around. I don't want to sit by myself. Uh, that's what Typhoid Mary said, and clearly her friends buckled. <laughs> Guys, help me. Sheldon, come on. Yeah, it's just one sneeze. <laughs> You're on your own. See ya, buddy. <clears throat> yes, Raj. When can I sit with you again? When I've seen two consecutive negative throat cultures spaced 12 hours apart. You know the drill. All right, if you'll excuse me, I am off to start a prophylactic course of antibiotics. I can't believe he's friends with Elizabeth Plimpton. I can't believe they let him into Canada. Whoa, you heard the man. Where's your throat cultures? I'm kidding. Sit down. <laughs> I'll be playing host to Dr. Elizabeth Plimpton. The cosmological physicist from Princeton? Yes. And until you acquire a surgical mask, please address your comments to me through a napkin. <laughs> We've been corresponding for years about our mutual interest in gravitational wave signatures of inflatons in the early universe, and now she's under consideration for a position at our university. Why didn't you tell me you knew Elizabeth Plimpton? I am a huge fan of hers. I didn't realize I was obligated to share my connection with things you're a fan of, but very well. You enjoy Canadian bacon? I've been to Toronto. <laughs> okay, fine. Where is she gonna sleep? My room, of course. Holy crap! <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> I have a two-part question. Go ahead. A, are you kidding me? And B, seriously, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> a, I rarely kid. And B, when I do kid, you will know it by my use of the word bazinga. <laughs> so you're saying the two of you are going to be sleeping in the same bed? Yes. Bazinga. <laughs> so much for opening up your home to me. Uh, well, who wants to stay in a hotel with windows that don't open, those crazy card-shaped keys? I'm so glad you understand. Uh, no, he doesn't understand. I understand. Well, I understand, too. You're just misappropriating my understanding. <laughs> <laughs> I think any university would want you, except, of course, any university that had already had you, because uh, they would have already wanted you before they, you know, got you. <laughs> from the mind that brought you high-low. <laughs> Let me show you to your room. All right. I guess I am tired. Good night, Leonard. Uh, sleep night. I mean, obviously, good night. I started to say sleep tight, and then I changed my mind in the middle. I swear to God, I'm smart. Get it together, ma'am. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Are you enjoying your stay? Yes, very much. Good. Excuse me. Okay, well, I guess I should get dressed so I can take everyone to work. You and Sheldon and Sheldon's friend, Dr. Plimpton, who you just met. It'd be fun. Like a clown car. <laughs> Hang on. Hmm? Yeah, what, huh? We just broke up. Well, uh, you and me? Yeah, we did not too long ago. How you doing with it? I'm not as good as you, apparently. I, I'm, I don't follow. You know what? It's none of my business. If you want to sleep with Sheldon's doctor buddy right after we stop seeing each other, go for it. Well, no. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm uncomfortable with you recommending that Leonard pursue having intercourse with Dr. Plumpton, who I assure you has better things to do. I'm not recommending it. I'm saying it already happened. Oh, that's preposterous. Tell her, Leonard. Well... <laughs> no. It wasn't my fault. The implication being that you somehow tripped and fell into her lady parts? You know what? I'm just gonna take the bus to work. No, but I can still drive you. Oh, no, no, it's okay. You might slip on a banana peel and get me pregnant. Well, I must say, I am shocked by this betrayal. I didn't betray Penny. Not Penny, me. How am I betraying you? Elizabeth's my friend, and you're playing with her. Yeah, I guess I did. Hey, 
Okay, baby doll pink, let's see if you can cover up the fact that I got my dad's feet. <laughs> two degrees, Sheldon. I just want to turn up the thermostat two degrees. Let me point out that two degrees can be the difference between water and steam. Yes, if we lived in a tea kettle. This is the temperature you agreed to in the roommate agreement. Oh, screw the roommate agreement. No, you don't screw the roommate agreement. The roommate agreement screws you. <laughs> You know what? Go to hell and set their thermostat. I don't have to go to hell. It's 73 degrees. I'm there already. Who is it? Leonard. Hang on. Can I sleep on your couch tonight? Uh, well, you can try, but the people across the hall are being very noisy. I heard that, huh? Apparently, the one fella tried to adjust the thermostat, then the other fella went bat crap crazy. So you agree he's nuts? Well, not as nuts as the guy who chooses to live with him. Believe it or not, he was worse when I met him. Oh, I do not believe that. Yes? Uh, I'm Leonard Hofstetter. I called you about the apartment. You said to come I know by what I said. I know what you said. I know what my mother said on March 5th, 1992. <laughs> What is the sixth noble gas? What? You said you're a scientist. What is the sixth noble gas? Uh, radon? Are you asking me or telling me? <laughs> telling you? <laughs> telling you. All right. Next question. Kirk or Picard? Oh, uh, well, that's tricky. Um, uh, original series over Next Generation, but Picard over Kirk. Correct. You've passed the first barrier to roommatehood. You may enter. Oh, this is pretty nice. Uh, the bedrooms are back there? That depends. I don't understand. Their, their existence is conditional? <laughs> no, but your ability to perceive their existence is conditional on you passing the second and third barriers. There's three. Each more daunting than the last. <laughs> Have a seat. Okay. <laughs> no, that's where I sit. <laughs> Explain the couch. Uh, oh, well, there were some people on the first floor moving out and they sold it to me for $100. Howard and Raj helped me bring it up. But what's wrong with the furniture we have? <sighs> They're lawn chairs. <laughs> and there was no place for company. Did it occur to you that was by design? <laughs> According to the roommate agreement, I'm entitled to allocate 50% of the cubic footage of the common areas. But you didn't notify me by email, so this is still a breach. I did notify you. D oh, you did, did you? Rat. <laughs> Hoisted by my own spam filter. Well, what am I doing in your spam folder? I put you there after you forwarded me a picture of a cat playing the piano entitled This Is Funny. Mix it in a Tovex in order to create a combustible gel that will generate over 8,000 kilonewtons of thrust. <laughs> cool. Cool. Won't work. Excuse me, but I've been working on this a long time. Trust me, it'll work. You don't see your mistake, do you? There's no mistake. This is for a full-scale rocket, not a model. Well, I've adjusted the formula. Not correctly. <laughs> okay, I've had it with you. You might be an expert on theoretical physics and science fiction programs and where to sit on a freaking couch, but this is applied physics. And when it comes to applied physics... Uh, uh, oh. What's happening? A bad thing, a very bad thing. <laughs> get the door, get the door, get the door, get the door, get the door! <laughs>
Oh, hi. What's going on? We're up on the roof bouncing laser beams off the moon. Uh, I'm sorry, what? Uh, it's pretty cool. We've got a two-meter parabolic reflector and everything. I thought you might want to see it. That makes no sense. How can you bounce stuff off the moon? There's no gravity. Uh, Leonard, this is Zach. Zach Leonard. Hey. Oh, sorry, I didn't know you were busy. Maybe another time. Yeah, maybe. Oh, hey, I want to see this laser thing. Oh, but what about the party? It's a surprise party. It doesn't matter when we get there. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, well, yeah, um, come on up. <laughs> so, how did you guys meet? My company designs the venues for the Cheesecake Factory. Your company? Well, my dad, but me and my sister are VPs. <laughs> so, menus. I know it sounds easy, but there's a lot of science that goes into designing them. will measure the photons that return and let us see it on this computer. Raj, get them some glasses. Cool, it's gonna be in 3D. <laughs> Preparing to fire laser at the moon. Make it so. There it is, there's the spike. 2.5 seconds for the light to return. That's the moon, we hit the moon. <laughs> <laughs> That's your big experiment? <laughs> oh, that for a line on the screen? Yeah, but uh, think about what this represents. The fact that we can do this is the only way of definitively proving that there are man-made objects on the moon, put there by a member of a species that only 60 years before had just invented the airplane. What species is that? <laughs> I was wrong. Penny can do better. Yeah, thanks. Should we invite him to the party? No, just keep walking. He must be very skilled at coitus. If she can do it, I can do it. If she can do it, I can do it. I can't do it. Hello? Oh, uh, uh, hi, hey, hi, Leslie. <laughs> Leonard Hofstadter, what are you doing here? Well, uh, I know, it's been a while. Yeah, 18 months. Right, right. How you doing? Fine. You? Uh, not bad. Uh, do you remember um, when we used to have sex and you said that it didn't mean anything, it was just for fun? Yeah. Do, do you want, want to do that again? What happened? Blondie dumped you? She didn't dump me. We were just in different places in the relationship. Right. Um, Anyway, uh, uh, apparently, it's okay to go back to people you're no longer seeing and have recreational sex with them. Uh-huh. So what do you say? <laughs> Let me think about it. She's not coming back. In a few minutes, when I gloat over the failure of this enterprise, how would you prefer I do it? The standard I told you so? With a classic neener neener? Or just my normal look of haughty derision? <sighs> you don't know we're wrong yet. Haughty derision it is. Excuse me? I'm Amy Farrah Fowler, you're Sheldon Cooper. Hello, Amy Farrah Fowler. I'm sorry to inform you that you have been taken in by unsupportable mathematics designed to prey on the gullible and the lonely. Additionally, I'm being blackmailed with a hidden dirty sock. If that was slang, I'm unfamiliar with it. If it was literal, I share your aversion to soiled hosiery. In any case, I'm here because my mother and I have agreed that I will date at least once a year. Interesting. My mother and I have the same agreement about church. I don't object to the concept of a deity, but I'm baffled by the notion of one that takes attendance. Well, then you might want to avoid East Texas. Noted. Now, before this goes any further, you should know that all forms of physical contact up to and including coitus are off the table. May I buy you a beverage? Tepid water, please. Good God, what have we done?